welcome everyone in this video we are going to implement linear regression in python completely from scratch and we are not going to use any of the building uh, models like that of sklearn1 sklearn1 but we are going to imp implement it from the scratch and it is going to be simple it is going to be a fun also if you do not know about linear regression and how the linear regression works then make sure you click on this i button which will take you to another video which explains simply what is linear regression and how it works and at the end of the video you will get a pdf notes which you can download from the description box uh, that PDF notes will have the codes which we are going to implement right now alongside with the explanation of everything. So you can download that PDF and you can use that while you are implementing the model by yourself so it will be easy for you. So make sure you also download that and let's get started. <music> I am Jay Patel and welcome to Coding Lane. In this channel, you will get the machine learning tutorials which are simplified and simply explained and it is also going to be a bit fun learning so you are going to enjoy that. So make sure you hit the red subscribe button and also hit the bell icon so that you get notified every week when I upload a new machine learning video. And without wasting any more time, let's jump directly to the screen. Okay, so we are right now in the screen and let's first start by importing our dependencies, sorry, and we are going to first import NumPy and then we are going to import our matplotlib library. So NumPy is basically useful when we are dealing with the matrices and matplotlib is useful when we are dealing with the graphs. So if you do not have any knowledge about NumPy and Matplotlib, I will give a link in the description where you can learn the NumPy. NumPy is super useful while we are doing machine learning in Python. So make sure you have the knowledge about that before you begin. So once we have our dependencies, we are going to get our data set. Uh, I already have made a data set, which is not real, but I have made it myself. Uh, let's see our how our data set looks like. Okay, so our data set have x on one side and y on the other side. So let's say this is the square foot area of the house and this is the price of the house. So we are making a very simple model which will which will predict the price of the house based on the square foot area it has. We are going to uh, separate the x and the y uh, on one side and the other. Okay, let's see our x and let's see how our x looks like. <clears throat> okay, that's great. But what we want is that we want to have a column of ones before the column of the square foot area. So what am I talking about and why am I talking about? You will get this in a while, but let me do it first and show you how it looks like. Okay, so we have our x here, which looks like ones on in one column and the other price uh, other square foot area on the other column. And we also want our Y to be in a proper shape. So let's reshape our Y to be in proper shape. And let's see how our shape of the X looks like and how our shape of the Y looks like. So our shape of the X is 45,2 and 45,1 is the shape of the Y. So 45 is the size of the data set. So we have our 45 uh, prices of the 45 houses and square foot area of the 45 houses. Okay, that's great. Now let's plot this into a graph and see how it looks like. Okay, so our plot looks like this and we have the square foot area on the X side and the price of the house on the Y side. We can see from this is that, let's say a house with a square foot area of 2000 has an approximately price of 200,000. So this is, uh, this is the data set that I have myself made and for the simplicity purpose I have kept the data to be simple so that the more focus can be made on learning about the linear regression. Okay, now I, let's, let's have a quick overview of the linear regression. So we know that in the linear regression we make predictions by plotting a straight line that approximately fits our data set and this is the equation of that line and we make the use of the cost function 
which will determine the error between the predicting value and the actual value. So the formula for the cost function is the error between the predicting value and the actual value and the square of it so that we get the absolute value of that. And we want this cost function, which is the representation of the error, to be minimum. So for the minimum value of the cost function, we need to use a gradient descent algorithm. So gradient descent algorithm makes use of these two formulas. And what this is going to do is that we're going to run this in a loop, which will, in every iteration, decrease the cost values. So let's say the cost value was here when at the beginning. So in one iteration, it will go down. In the other iteration, it will go even down. And then it will eventually come and oscillate and reach to our local minima. So this is how our gradient descent uh, works. And if you want to know more about the cost function, click on the upper right corner, which will take you to the video, which has a detailed explanation on the cost function. And if you want to know about the gradient descent, then now click on the upper right corner, which will take you to the gradient descent algorithm. Now let's move ahead. Now we're going to make the complete model of the linear, reg linear regression. And I'm going to take four parameters for this and they're going to be our x, y and learning rate and the iterations. So learning rate determines how fast we want to train. Uh, I will get to this learning rate again and iteration determines how long, how many times we want to run the loop. And we, I'm going to define M, which is going to be the size of our data set. So currently it is 45. And I'm going to initialize theta with currently zero. So theta is going to be a zero of two comma one uh, because you only have one feature here. So the size of the theta will be two comma one, which is just going to be theta one and theta two. Okay. Now we're going to run a loop for iteration times. And in this loop, we are just going to run these four lines. So these four lines will make our complete linear regression model. So let me get the bypred first. So np dot is used for getting the matrix multiplication in NumPy. And our cost function will have this formula. Okay, so I have, we have our cost now. So we basically have these two lines here. And let's move on to the gradient descent. So we are first going to have a derivative of the theta, which is and our theta by. So these two lines, we have these two equations. And that's it. Actually, that's it. Our linear regression model is that's it. And we are going to return the theta parameter, which will be used for our predictions. So let's return theta parameter and let's call this model function so that we can train the model and see how our model has been trained. So I'm going to have iterations. Let's say I'm running a loop for 100 and let's say I have a learning rate of, uh, I'm going to have a very small learning rate uh, and learning rate should be actually always small and I'm going to get more about learning rate in a while. Let's first call our model. Oh, okay, so we have this and let's run this. It says iteration, okay. And there's an S here. And our model has been run. So let's try to predict our value. We know that the prediction can be made with this line. So this line is nothing but NP dot this line. So let's let's make some predictions. Uh, let's take uh, instead of let's take any value. Let's say I'm taking one five six seven is the square foot area of the house, and appending one before that, and let's see what the prices come. Okay, so prices come as one hundred and fifty five thousand approximately, which is pretty 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 similar. See fifteen hundred here, approximately, which has approximately fifteen hundred price, approximately. Oh, sorry, here to here. Yeah, so it works well. Let's try our, let's try out some more prizes. Okay, so for saving our time, I've already computed some of the values, and it is predicting the price for that. So one five four 
1547 has approximately this price, 1896 has approximately this price, and we can see how well it is uh, aligning with our actual values. And this was our linear regression model, but I do not want to wrap up our video right now because we can miss a lot of learnings from here. So I'm, I want you to know more about the learning rate and about more about the cost. So what let's what we do is what let's plot a graph between the cost value and the number of iterations. So how can we do that? We can do that by creating a cost list, which is first empty, and we will append all the cost into it so every time and every iteration we are appending a cost into it and we are going to return this cost list from this and we are going to plot a graph of it and see how our graph looks like okay so we have it uh, no we do not have it mm, I think we now have it and let's plot a graph okay so we can see that our plot looks like this the learning rate has been sorry the cost function value was decreasing and then it remains almost steady but it does not give a clear view so why not we try to decrease the number of iterations and train our model again and see how the graph looks like so now we can see with the, only the 10 iterations how our cost value is decreasing so our cost value was high at first and then we are running this model and the cost value is decreasing every time um but why not but what about the learning rate let's say our learning rate was this much before let's say if we have a big learning rate so let's see let's see what's what happening with that we can see that our predictions has, has been giving a dramatically bad results and let's see how our plot looks like Oh, so our plot looks like instead of converging, it is diverging, right? So it is not good. So cost value is not going down, but it is going up. So why is that happening? It is because that if we have a larger learning rate, so what is going to happen is that instead of going down, it will subtract theta with a large value. And after subtracting, it won't go here, but it will go directly here. So it is going up. And from here it will go another up and then from there it will go another up I hope you can visualize this so with that our cost is our cost function is always gonna go up and up and up so it's so the value is always gonna increase and never convert so it's gonna go diverging and that was it make sure you download the PDF note so that you can implement the model yourself and use that PDF alongside with your implementation so that it will be easier for you and this was a very simple linear regression model with a small data set and with only single variable but if you want to go one more step further then click on this video where we are going to implement the implement linear regression on the real world house price data set and with which will have more number of parameters so i see you there